Hello everybody, welcome to What Kids Need. Obviously if you're listening to this you might have kids. I want to talk about empowering your children, which is different kind of power, and we need to empower our children. By empowering them it's to give them their own power, to give them their own personal power and to teach them how to use it. And if you can do this with your children you will grow up really confident kids. They will be confident, they'll know how to make choices, they know how to be strong and good people. It's when we try to overpower our children and control them too much that we disempower them. And then we land up with different sorts of children. We land up with children who are resentful and difficult and resistant. And that's why empowerment is so important with children. Because the more we empower them, the less problem we'll have with them. If you want to empower your children, you give them their power. You let them decide. You don't boss them around all the time. You let them make choices. And you make them feel that their choices and their ideas and their thoughts and their accomplishments are empowering them. And you empower them by the way you speak to them. Tell them all the time that they're good. Remember, as I've said before, you are their inner voice. What you tell them is becomes their inner voice. So your inner voice wants to be that you're telling them they can do it, you're telling them they can get better, you're telling them you trust them, you're telling them that they can make good choices. Then you become their inner voice and they believe that. Because remember, everything our child hears from us becomes their inner dialogue. It's how they frame themselves. So you want to empower your child even when they're little. Empowerment can come in various ways. You can empower them by the way you allow them ex to express themselves, that every emotion that they have is valid. So when they're angry or cranky or frustrated, that you empower them and say, yeah, that's a, how you're feeling and it's a funny feeling and it's not a good feeling. Or when they're sad, you let them express that. Or when they're scared, you let them express it or their anxiety. That's giving them emotional empowerment. You allow them to express themselves fully that everything is valid. Maybe some of the behaviours need to be changed for them. Perhaps they need to learn a better way to handle their anger or their fear or their anxiety. But you're still empowering them when you're teaching them. You also empower them by giving them choices, letting them choose. Do they want the green pasta or do they want the white pasta? Do they want to buy the red t-shirt or do they want the blue t-shirt? Do they want the small doll or the big doll or the big truck or the little truck or the space Lego or do they want the other Lego? You give them choices all the time because when you have a choice, you're picking up your power because you're making decisions and that will make your child strong and confident to make decisions that you're not making all the decisions for them. You can even empower them by how they are expressing themselves through their play. Then when you're doing activities together, you empower them and you keep telling them that that's good and that was a wonderful way you did it and you're smart. You can empower children all the time. Parents get into this role where they feel they're supposed to control and have power over them all the time. And there were times we need to step it up and make a decision that's the the most safe decision for them right now, the best decision, and then we do that. For the most part, you don't have to have power and control with your children. You need to just keep empowering them all the time. You will have a happier child, and if you have a very strong-willed child, a child who's determined, if you start to try to overpower them too much, and if you take away their power, you will find that you will have trouble with them, they will jackknife on you, and you will have more trouble. It's better to give a child who's got a mind of their own lots and lots of choices and empower them and only step in when necessary. There will be times as a parent you will need to step in, but you can limit those times and you can make your child learn to trust what they get. And that's the other thing. Empowerment means getting them to trust. Well, what do you think is the best thing to do? Do you think we should need a hat today? It's a bit sunny. And they'll go, oh yeah, it's going to be sunny. Yeah, that's a good decision. Well, do you think we need to take the umbrella today? Do you think it's going to rain? What do you think? You keep on getting them 
to make decisions, to make choices, to take the power in a situation. You can also do this with behaviour management. For example, if they've just hit their sister or knocked over the Lego, you, instead of telling them off, you can empower them and you can say to them, so why did you do that? Like, what was your reason for doing that? And let them have a voice and you listen to them and then you say, so how would you feel if they had done that to you? Instead of using that situation to tell them off, you lose it as a learning to empower them to change their behaviour. What could have been a better behaviour? What could you have done that would have been better? What do you think? And you make them think about it and then they'll go, oh, I could have probably just told them off or asked them not to get in my way or touch my things. Or I could have come and, well, you could have come and seen me, couldn't you? You could have come and asked me to intervene. You're giving them other options to change the behaviour. I think it's important to empower everyone, not just your children. I think this is a really good thing to do with everybody because when we empower other people, we balance the relationship as well and we're also coming from love. Empowerment is all about loving your child to give them the power and then trusting in that they will make good decisions and if they were veering off, you just help them a little bit to encourage them another way. Children will learn quickly this way. Children will also learn to see what's right and what's not right because you won't be telling them they'll have to have to make a decision. So when you say to them, do you think that was right that you smashed your brother's car? And they will actually have to say, no, it wasn't really. Putting them almost in the position that they're almost parenting themselves. They're making a decision, an adult, more adult decision, a parent decision. And children are quite capable of this. I remember I'd often say to the child when I was teaching, and they'd come and complain and I'd say, well, what, what do you want me to do? And they would then have to go, oh, okay. But they would think, and I would empower them that, I think that you should tell them off, or I think they should have to have time out for five minutes. And I would say, okay, that seems fair enough to me, so we'll do that. But I empowered that child, and then that child came up with a decision. Of course, sometimes they would come up with terrible decisions and you'd have to monitor that because, of course, I was the teacher then. But it's the same when you're a parent. They'll often surprise you by coming up with very good decisions. And children want justice in those situations, so whatever seems as justice to them will actually make it go away and then it'll fix it and then you can move on. Empowering also in the house creates a lot of harmony because there isn't a lot of fighting between you and the child about what you're going to wear or, or what you're going to eat. You can give them a lot of choices. Sometimes, particularly with young children, as long as they're getting enough nutrition, if they only want a jam sandwich for dinner that night or they're not very hungry and they just want to have fruit, it's okay. You don't have to control everything all the time. You can actually be flexible and empower them because children will eventually eat or sleep when they need to, particularly when they're young. As your children get older and your kids are now into your maybe teenage years, this is when empowerment comes to be a very important part of their life. They will want to control their life, but they will also be scared. And you have to understand that, that within that, wanting to be on their own and not have you around and do it, there's some fear that comes up, just a little bit like a toddler, I think run towards you then run away and you can just empower them and then when necessarily you can give the parental support or the adult support. If you empower your kids as they are teenagers you won't have as much trouble with them either that you will you give them a choice and you trust them. Most kids are pretty well behaved, most kids will do this well and children who are often not well behaved and are having power games with you is because there's a dynamic that's not working in your relationship with them and you might want to seek some professional help with that so you can guide it through those years. I once asked my son, one of my sons, why like, why are those kids playing up with their parents so much now? Like you guys are pretty good with us and this was in the teenage years and he just said they're getting them back. 
they probably treated them really badly when they were growing up and now they can get them back. And I just thought it was so powerful and it really made me think how important it is to empower your children and not disempower them. Because when you disempower them for years and years and years and then they get to 11 or 12, they will start to want to take the power back and they will become rebellious and difficult. And that's a good reason to empower your children when they're young because then you're not vying for power. You're going to have more of a love relationship with them and it's going to be also more balanced. And also it's like they will feel that you are trusting in them and you have confidence in them when you let them make the choices and you, you give them their own parts of their power that you can give them as much as possible because then they feel confident that in some, in a way, they're like grown up. They're grown up because they can decide or choose. It's also important in the empowerment that you negotiate and you compromise with your kids. So you can negotiate the bedtime with them. You can compromise how much television or screen time they're having and try to compromise. You know, if they say something ridiculous like, I want to be able to have, you know, so many hours a day and you think it's a bit much then pull it back and then find a compromise and that's empowering for both you and for them because when a child chooses to make the decision with you then they're more likely to stick to it and you won't have as much trouble because they are part of the decision making and that's what empowerment is important if you've got a child who wants to go to bed at half past eight and you wanted them to go to bed at half past seven maybe then you can actually negotiate that to uh, 8 o'clock during the week and on the weekends, half past say 9 o'clock or whatever. And you empower them so they they will go to bed more easily at 8 o'clock then. Whereas before, if you tried without a discussion and a compromise, you would have had trouble getting them to bed. It's about meeting your kids in the middle and treating them like individuals individuals and like equal partners in your relationship. Of course in some ways it's not equal, we know it's not because it's an adult child relationship but we can find ways to make it more equitable particularly for the child and it will feel more just to the child and it will feel more fair. Children really retaliate against us when we're not fair, when they don't see it as fair or just but if they know it's fair or just and they're part of that process, then they will actually be fine with it. For example, if they're misbehaved and you say to them, well, you know, I need, I need that there has to be some sort of discipline here. Do you want to have some time out in your room or do you want to miss your TV screen time? And they'll decide and then you do that, but only for a short time. It's more something you do that you work together with that you're not lording over them and then you're going to have them actually passively and then later on resisting you quite aggressively. You want to stop that. As you can tell, I'm really into empowerment because I think it also grows our children. It grows them into people very young who can make decisions and then are happy with their decisions. And it grows them into people who can see what's fair and unfair and what's right and what's wrong because they're part of making a decision about whether that's right or wrong, not just you. So they're actually making a decision together. So get your kids to join with you and empower them and I really feel it will empower your relationship with them and your future relationship as adults with them will be very good and it will be very balanced and there will be a lot of love. So I'm wishing you a wonderful week with your kids, no matter what age they are, whether they're three or 53. I'm wishing good luck with them and keep empowering them and keep loving them.